Good morning. Thank you for coming to this uh, webinar today uh, on top 10 tips for landscape design in Revit. To give you some background about us, uh, CADPOINT is based in Crowthorne, Berkshire. It's a gold partner of Autodesk Software. Uh, we have a team of experts to assist all aspects of design uh, that you may have. We're also partners with some of the most trusted hardware manufacturers in the industry, including HP, NVIDIA, etc. Uh, as well as software that we uh, provide for you, our team can also offer introductory training for new customers and also advanced courses for experienced users uh, to help you get more from the software that you have. So just moving on to our technical consultant, Lee Milligan, who will be speaking to you today in this webinar. Uh, Lee, handsome gentleman as he is, um, he is a BIM technical consultant has been with us for about 10 uh, more than 10 years uh, you can see here he's covered a whole range of uh, experience three to four years with practice small and large scale large mixed use town and city redevelopments as well as doing house and uh, one house and extensions etc so quite fairly well-rounded uh, he's uh, he's still a geek still passionate about architecture uh, he believes that BIM and Revit are not only uh, tools to finish to create the architecture, but to, to create better architecture. So use it to improve what you already have. Great, so uh, without further ado, I'm just going to pass you on to Lee. Welcome along to CADPOINT's top 10 tips for landscape design in Revit. This webinar is for anyone interested in creating external works in Revit, from landscape architects to architects citing their building. My name is Lee Milligan, BIM Technical Consultant here at CADPOINT. The aim is to give you a few helpful tips to make your life a bit easier, whether it is merely to site your building in its surroundings or for you to hit a BIM Level 2 mandate. We hope we can give you confidence it can be done in Revit, and with a little bit of setup, can be extremely powerful and enable you to offer new deliverables. Hopefully I'll cover the basics, but if you do have any queries, there'll be a space for Q&A at the end of the webinar or you can contact us at support at cadpoints.co.uk. So tip number one, we're not even going to start in Revit. Tip one is get your DWG sorted in AutoCAD. Make sure it is tidy, the usual suspects, purge and audit. Know your coordinates. Work with survey or OS maps. Ideally work with contours as they make life much easier in Revit. If your topographical survey has 3D points, ideally turn these into blocks or circles as Revit doesn't see points. There is plenty of list routines out there that will turn points into circles for AutoCAD and then import these into Revit. If you can't find any, drop us a line on support at cadpoint.co.uk and we can send you a routine. Like I said though, let's work with contours. I'm going to start here in AutoCAD and just check my coordinates. Remembering later I'll need to add three zeros to these numbers as we're in millimetres. Selecting these contours we can see they have an elevation, a Z value. This contour is at zero zero so we need to move it up. If we orbit around we can see this is the case. In the properties, I can change it to 77,000 and it is moved to the right Z value. Finally, we will prepare this for export by purging our DWG. And save our drawing. Tip two, now we're in Revit. Always, well, pretty much always, link DWGs, not import. This means any changes in AutoCAD will update in Revit, like an XREF. Try and set up coordinates as early as possible in Revit. This is done by shared coordinates, specifying coordinates at a point. Let's go and have a little look at that. So now in Revit, we're going to move into our existing datum level 
zero zero and we're going to link CAD not import it. This is so any changes in our AutoCAD file will be updated in Revit. We're going to choose our file to link, make sure these settings are okay and set this to millimeters, auto center to center and link. I'm just gonna move this out of the way so that we can see our coordinates. On the manage tab, I'm going to check what our coordinates actually are by using the report shared coordinates tool. Notice the AutoCAD and the Revit file do not share the same coordinates. We need to tell Revit where it is in the world. To do this, we need to set our shared coordinates. I'm going to set my Eastings as 450000 and three more zeros for the conversion to millimeters. And now the same for my Northings. And three more zeros. Now when we check our coordinates, we are aligned. You can see 45, 45, 1294, 1294. We can check our the rest of our Eastings. And our northings. And if we go into our 3D view, we can see that our Z values are at the correct heights also. Tip three Revit topo surfaces. Ideally, create from a topographical survey. Remember I said contours are best? Put down some points outside your site as adding external points later is a little bit tricky. Let's go and have a little look at that. We find the topo surface tool on the massing and site tab. We're going to use the place point tool to put the corner points in. It makes your life much easier later. The heights I'm placing here are in relation to the nearest contour. And the last one. Now I'm going to switch to create from import and select the linked DWG. Choose the layer from AutoCAD which you want to use to create points, in this case contours. Awesome. And if I select one of these points, I can check the height off that point. And a green tick to finish the surface. Finally, we can give it a material of grass. We give it a bit of color. and hide the DWG and we're left with an accurate topographical surface. Tip 4. Use phasing, it's awesome. It does cut and fill calculations but you must set phasing up. Basically, have an existing site and then do some time travel to the future and change your site. This will then allow you to do a graded region which will show you your cut and fill. We're going to time travel into our proposed plan. And on the Massing and Site tab, use the graded region tool. 
selecting create a new top of surface exactly like existing one. The theory is we can then use these points to edit our proposed site and see the difference between old and new. We're going to select these points for simplicity's sake and say they are all the same height, making a flat area. And a green tick to finish. And if we use the spot elevation tool, we can see this area is now flat. And over here it's sloped. If I create a site section, I'm just gonna select and hide the DWG. The default view settings show the existing site and the proposed. The existing site is shown here as a dashed blue line. Selecting the proposed surface, I can see the properties of the surface, one of which is cut and fill. Here are cut of 19.294 meters. It is also visible in 3D. In the properties box, I can change the view to only show the proposed topo surface. Not the existing. Tip five, hardscaping, floors. Use the floor tool in Revit to do external works. Although topo surface, although the topo surface tool is amazing at creating greater regions, it doesn't allow you to show a construction buildup. You can do this with floors, but ordinarily a whole floor will slope unless you use the modify sub elements command. This allows a layer of the floor to take the fall. Let's go and have a little look at that. I'm in my existing 3D view and loaded in an architectural building for reference. Moving into my proposed plan, I'm going to add a floor. Choosing the block paving type. This floor is made up of block paving on a 50 mil sand base and a 150 mil hardcore. Notice the hardcore layer has a variable parameter, meaning the hardcore will take the fall or the slope of the floor. I'm going to use the pick edge tool to draw the boundaries of my floor. And there's my floor. If we go into our section view, we can see the build up. But it's flat. The edges are correct here when we see it up against the topo. So rather than sloping the whole slab, we're going to use the modify sub elements tool to add in some split lines and adjust the height of these elements. I'm going to move them up by a hundred mil. Now back in our section, using the spot slope tool, we can see it has added a slight slope, a one in 139. Back in our plan view, if I edit these subregions up to say 250 mil,
now back in section. We can see it's automatically updated the slope and our hardcore is taking the fall. Tip six, hardscaping, curbs. Curbs should be easy, right? Not really, but because we've used floors to create our external hard landscaping, we can use the edge of these to create curbs using a curve profile. You can do this with either the slab edge tool or a modeled in place element, and that's how I'm going to do it here. I'm going to select our floor and isolate it so we can easily work on it. I'm going to create a new modeled in place family as a floor category. And we'll call it curb. Using the sweep tool, we're going to pick edges to select the edges we would like the curb to be on. Then choose a profile off the curb. And adjust the direction and any offsets. And a green tick. And we have a curb following our floor edge. Green tick to finish. Remembering anything we create is not just visible in 3D, but sections and plans also. Tip seven, hardscaping, steps. To create external steps, we use the stair tool with a start and end height. You can create your own step profiles as most external steps have a fall to shed water, whereas internal stairs are level. I have two floors created here, one higher than the other. I'm going to move into the proposed plan. We're going to use the stair tool, making sure the right stair type is used. This one has a bespoke tread profile to shed water. I'm editing the base and the top height. I'm going to draw where I want my stair to start and end. The properties show me the rise and the going off the stair. By default here, we have railings to go on the edge of the steps. Looking at it in 3D shows the bespoke tread profile and the railings applied. I'm now going to go back to edit the stairs and adjust the width. Quite effective, I think. Back in plan, I'm just going to add or copy the railings to the center of the stairs. Tip eight, Revit railings. Fences, hedgings, and railings all use the railing tool in Revit. As of 2018, they will slope with a topo surface as well. This is awesome. So we're gonna move back into plan view. And using the railing tool to add a path. A green tick to finish. I'm just going to copy these railings down a few times. And move back into a 3D view. I'm going to swap the fence out for different types of railings in Revit. First the wire fence. Notice that hedges are in here too.
and a taller hedge. And a road barrier. If I move one of these fences over to this sloped area, notice it doesn't follow the slope natively until we tell it to using the pick new host tool. And it now follows the topographical slope. Tip nine, trees. A landscaping project wouldn't be complete without trees. Revit has two types by default, a simplistic one, which are simple 3D models. Some would say they look like lollipops, but do a job. An RPC, rich photorealistic content. These look good when rendered, but can look like cardboard cutouts when they're seen in other 3D views. So we suggest using a mixture. So you go in and edit the Revit trees, add your existing tree symbols that you've probably got in AutoCAD already, and that's for plan or elevations. And you can create or download 3D tree models for greater model accuracy and then link these into Revit also. Let's look at how we could change the plan and elevation representations. We're going to move back into our site plan and add a Revit RPC tree. Notice it if we add it to a slope, The slope cuts the tree representation. Changing it to one of our customized RPC trees. The plan symbol changes. This can be customized to your own tree symbols if you like. If we look at these trees in section or elevation, I'm just going to hide the DWG. We can choose our tree symbolic representation. Again, this can be completely customizable to your own trees, even using ones you may already use in AutoCAD. Tip 10, schedules are awesome. Because Revit is parametric, everything has parameters or information attached. We can then harness this information in schedules. If you wanted to know the cut and fill in your model, we can see that in a schedule, or the number of street furniture, maybe benches or planters, or the length of railings, or maybe plant mixes. Now this one's a little bit more advanced, but let's have a look at subregions and then a schedule of these subregions to calculate the mix of plants in these areas using the schedule key. So here we have a topo surface with some subregions pre created. These areas have different materials assigned to them, in this case, showing plant mixes. If we move into our plan view, these are shown as different colors. And here comes for quite an advanced feature. A key schedule in Revit is similar to a lookup table in Excel. Plant mix one has 8% plant type one and 20% plant type two. And the different plants are percentages for different plant mixes. Now, if we go into our actual schedule, we can see the areas of these subregions are shown along with the key schedule. 
Therefore, we can calculate the number of plants for each plant mix area. That is awesome stuff. Now, if we go back into our plan view, and select in plant mix three, here we can see back in our schedule that we have 21 and 11 plants. If we edit plant mix three, This changes the area and therefore the number of plants is now five and nine. Very clever. We did say it would be the top 10 tips, but here's a few others for free. There's a lot more that we can show you, but we're out of time. But some more top tips would be look at Revit view templates. They standardize your output. Definitely look at Dynamo, a visual programming tool that allows you without any programming knowledge to program repetitive tasks like placing trees randomly or adding strings or paths between objects. If Revit speeds your projects up and allows you to offer more deliverables, Dynamo will supercharge it. And finally, if you're a landscape architect and considering Revit, I'd recommend you look at CS Artisan RV. It's a paid for add-on, but it is specifically for landscape architects with plant libraries and much, much more. Well, that's all we have time for, so thanks for watching. If you have any queries, please contact us on support at cabpoint.co.uk. I would suggest your next steps would be an external works workshop with us. We can tailor it to your needs and we can go into more depth on some of the things that we've covered here. Thank you very much, Lee. Don't go just yet. Um, we've got to see if we've got a few questions uh, from, uh, from you guys. If they have any questions, please put it in the question box uh, and we can try and answer them. Uh, I believe, Lee, there was one question. It's come up from uh, yes. yeah, Jacob Hanford. Uh, is there anywhere we can download the CAD point tree types with the inbuilt symbols? Um, okay, yes, uh, Jacob. What, I, what we can do is we can uh, send those out. So if anybody does want that, if they were to email in to support at cadpoint.co.uk, we can send that across. At the moment, that is a work in progress. Um, it's something that I use in my uh, Revit landscape training uh, course that we do. So if you were interested, yeah, we can send that across. Um, but what I would suggest is that um, on all of those type of things, the, really the 10 tips were really to whet your appetite. So if you are interested in doing a bit of landscape architecture um, inside of Revit, uh, we can do custom uh, training courses for you. Um, so once we do come out of this uh, strange situation we find we're in at the moment, um, we can do those as a workshop one-on-one um, -on -one with you guys. We can come to your sites and we can take you through how to maybe use your own symbols, which you've all probably got in there at the moment, um, or how to look at modifying floors and so on. Okay, great. Um, we've got a question from uh, Robert. Uh, how steep is the learning curve for Revit if you're already proficient at AutoCAD? Uh, learning curve for Revit if you're already. Um, so in most cases, if we're just talking about Revit, not just landscape architecture, so if we're talking about Revit, we do a three-day training course with, um, and I say out of that, so we call that the Revit Essentials. Out of that three-day uh, three training course, we would say that I, I like to think that people can then go away and use Revit, um, say up to planning stage at that point. We do cover detailing and so on. Um, hopefully people come away from that training course saying, wow, uh, Revit is great. Lee Milligan is an amazing trainer. He's taught us everything we need to know. 
And then usually what happens after that is we go into this little um, downhill cycle where we need to go and create our own content, which was what a lot of that was today. Um, and that's what we call family editing inside of Revit. So then we um, can do a um, bespoke workshops for you guys as well. So two or three extra days um, and that will move you on to being really proficient. Um, so all in all, three days uh, training will get you up and going. Um, a couple of extra days then on a workshop one other thing I would suggest, actually, um, which we do more and more these days, is really setting up your template for people so we can come along and work alongside you to create your own template. Now, templates are really important in AutoCAD. They're even more important in Revit. So things like having your pre-built wall types or tree types in this case or um, line types and title blocks and all those type of things you just take for granted in AutoCAD, uh, we, can, uh, we help you create that. For Revit as well. So yeah, please get in contact at support at cabpoint.co.uk um, and we can give you more information on that as well. Okay, great. A couple of quick, uh, very technical questions here. Um, so uh, can we change the diameter of the tree on plan? Uh, okay, let's come in somewhere else. So uh, yes, we can in that um, bespoke Cadpoint uh, tree that I made up. Yes, I've done that. So that can be changed. You can't in the native Revit ones, but you can in the CAD point one. Again, if you're to come on one of our training courses, I'll show you how to do that, but it is set up in the CAD point one at the moment. Like I said, that is only a work in progress one. It's something that I do with um, our delegates when we do training. So um, it's there for you to explore um, and we can help you alongside that. As so it's well. customized, it's customized. It is, it is yeah. customizable, yeah. Uh, so great, so we've got questions from uh, Ruth. Have you tried using railings to form footpaths? I have not. And if you have, Ruth, um, I'm always open to learn some new things. So, um, no, Ruth, I yeah, would, no. yeah, so, um, yeah, I haven't. Um, have you seen that somewhere else, maybe? Um, I, because they would follow a slope, yes, so we could possibly do that. So, um, interesting take on it. Um, but yeah, I'll give that a go at some point and I'll, um, I'll let you know. Perfect. And also, um, one question here from Drew. Uh, do you have the tree and hedge ratings in an earlier earlier version as a lot of uh, Drew's clients are still on 2018? So it's a, it's a uh, version problem now. I don't, I think. I would need to check when I first created that originally. I think I've only got those in Revit 2020. Um, but they can be done within earlier versions, changed around. You can make, if ratings. you make them yourself, you can do, yes. Um, but yeah, you, the ones that I've got, I think are only in Revit, possibly 2019, um, maybe, but definitely 2020. Perfect. And also from uh, Stephen, uh, what's the best way to do curbs in Revit LT? Yeah, so curbs in Revit LT are a bit of a problem. I did um, touch on that in the um, in the demo there, that um, in LT you can't do modeled in place elements. So um, we are probably down to doing maybe a line-based family. Um, so you can do it as a loadable family, a line-based family, and you can pick a point on that. Um, it doesn't work quite as smoothly, so things like the corners won't um, mitre automatically. Um, there is possibly the option as well, um, although I don't like doing it as well because it, it, again, you do um, fall into problems in doing it, is using a slab edge. So there's an option in Revit underneath floors to do a slab edge. Um, model in place is easier because you have more control over it, which is why I showed it like that, but you can use a slab edge tool um, is the way I've done it in the past, but you don't quite get the same outcome from it. But yeah, it's one of the things, um, and along with model um, that modify um, floor, so adding a slope to a floor, you can't do that in LT, unfortunately. Okay, great. Yep, that's perfect. Um, any other questions there? Uh, let us know, put it in the box. Um, and also, if you have any other questions, do send it to us, uh, sport at cadpoint.co.uk, and we'll try and answer those for you um, as well. Just to let you know, uh, we do have um, so just a, a quick overview of uh, sort of the products that Revit you can get Revit in. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, Ruth just said uh, just a quick question. It says she says she hasn't tried it yet, but Ruth, that might be a good idea for me to go and have a little look at. Um, so if you do send, if you could just send a um, an email into support at uh, cadpoint.co.uk, um, it might jog my memory, um, and I'll have a little go at that and then let you know, Ruth. If not, Ruth, I'll jog his memory, no problem. Um, so, yeah, so just have a look at the, the slide here. This is the kind of the ways you would get into Revit, really. Uh, Revit LT and Revit and AutoCAD LT available in the uh, 
AutoCAD Revit LT Suite. Uh, then you've also, you can get Revit, the full version, which covers a lot of the points uh, in that uh, box there um, that you could do with the full, full version as opposed to uh, Revit LT. Uh, and then you would get the whole uh, AEC collection as well, covers as well as doing uh, Revit. I think uh, Lee touched on a lot of AutoCAD stuff working with Revit and landscape design. And you can get both pro packages plus a lot more within the AEC collection. Uh, just a bit overview there. If you have any questions about uh, any of that, do let us know. Obviously, uh, contact us after the webinar, uh, etc. for more information on that. Hey, Sal, can I just interrupt there? I think um, yeah. I had a, a text from one of our customers there, um, just a private text, and saying about a point cloud. Have we, have we got a point cloud demo coming up? Um, in the future is that right we do like, we like do Jonathan. that's yeah. we do that's right yeah so we've got a webinar tomorrow just to let you know we've got a webinar tomorrow at 11 a.m it's just top 10 tips for uh uh creating custom families with revit uh, this is with our architectural technologies and bin manager jonathan reinhardt um and also uh just to go back on that we have another point cloud webinar coming up as well on thursday april 16th uh 11 a.m. again top 10 tips for working with point cloud data and Jonathan Reinhardt will go through the best versions the best ways to do that uh, on that webinar as well so there's a couple of things to look forward to in the next couple of weeks um, with that I don't think there are any other questions Lee have anything to add uh, no so um, yeah thanks very much for listening I hope it's been um, helpful for you guys um, and yeah it was a bit of a, um, a rush through in the top 10 tips but that's what I think we're going for in these just trying to give you a real flavor of what is possible not necessarily to show you everything and how to do everything but just to show you um, what is possible so yeah please do get in contact with us okay perfect um, so thank you so much for uh, joining us today um, and I wish you guys stay safe um, and uh, please uh, join us for tomorrow's webinar and the, and the one in the next week. Um, have a good day. Thank you very much. Bye for now.